Xenos Free Clinics uh, began with a conversation a friend of mine, Tony Coor, who's an ER doctor who was volunteering at the Vineyard Free Clinics. I'm an emergency room doctor, and in the emergency room you see all kinds of patients, all walks of life, get lost in the shuffle in that they had nowhere to go for medical care. And people that had no insurance had no place to go for their medical care. And they would keep coming back to the emergency rooms because it's really all they had. So uh, in 06, 2006, Tony started researching what it would take from a legal standpoint, and we started the ministry team in 2007, and in February of 2008, uh, opened the first location of Zenos Free Clinics. The way the process works is uh, somebody comes in and they sign in, and then they go through a triage process where the nurses take their vital signs and the blood pressure, get the history about why they're there. Then they're brought to the uh, back room and seen by the physician, where we basically have a stethoscope and a few simple instruments and try to do the best we can in helping them and figuring out what their medical problems are. If the patients can't afford the medications, a large part of our budget goes to providing the $4 drug cards for the patients to get the medicines, uh, mostly at Giant Eagle and Kroger. But the most crucial part of the clinics is we present them to a prayer team and it's no pressure, it's totally optional and it's a prayer team of two people. They have a very succinct process that they go through to do a brief inventory of somebody's spiritual beliefs and that gets right down to the nugget of um, their understanding of what the gospel really is and then in a really relaxed way the prayer team can go through just a few verses uh, reading through what the gospel really is. We had a gentleman come in and you could tell that he was just in a really, really hard place in life. And um, I don't think that he'd had anyone to really sit down and listen to him in probably a really long time. And you could tell how healed he seemed. Um, I think it really meant a lot to him just to have someone listen to, you know, what had been going on in his life. The Apostle Paul talks in Romans 1, verse 16, uh, and he says that uh, he's not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of salvation for those who believe. And we have seen around 30 people uh, respond to the gospel and put their faith in Christ and come into a personal relationship with God. Um, we've, we've seen lives change. Me and my wife, we're from Mexico, and she got real sick. And uh, we didn't have no insurance for her. She was bleeding. And we came, we came over that Tuesday, and uh, she got taken care of it and uh, they invite us to the prayer room and uh, they pray with us and before they did the praying they asked us if, if uh, we wanted to receive Jesus Christ in our heart and uh, we accepted Jesus and everything has been wonderful our lives change it's really great when when people they give you the love and they show you how to accept Jesus Christ with no cost. I'm learning a lot and growing spiritually. It is like God gave His only Son to die for us on the cross. And I believe that's the point. If, if we can all give the love of God and, and, and we can draw people to Him.